Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the uh, last of our quarterly Frankie Fora for the year. Uh, I'm Jim Chandler. I'm the director of the Frankie Institute for the Humanities at the University of Chicago, which together with the Division of Humanities is the co-sponsor for these events. Uh, and uh, this is the last one for the year. Uh, we've, we're putting together next year's schedule. Uh, the first for next year will be uh, on November 4th, um, Guy Fawkes Day, for those of you who uh, follow British history. Um, and it'll be Hillary Chute. Hillary Chute is uh, someone in the English department who's um, been working for a long time with Art Spiegelman. Uh, she sort of co-produced a book with him called Meta Mouse, uh, about the making of mouse. Uh, and she uh, works on graphic novels and graphic fiction in relation to other kinds of literature and other kinds of modern media. Uh, her first book about uh, female uh, writers of graphic fiction, uh, it was a big hit, uh, won her early tenure at, in the university, and now she's writing a, a book with a broader subject about the illustration of, uh, of catastrophes. Uh, going back to Goya. If you know Goya's famous sequence, the I, I saw sequence, uh, his drawings from the early 19th century of wars and so on that he saw. That's part of the story and it comes up to the present and probably has something about Spiegelman in it. And the talk will be called Disaster Drawn. So that's November 4th. Uh, for today's uh, event, which I've been looking forward to for some time, um, we have a, a splendid introducer of a splendid event, and that person is Nama Rokum, who is, uh, for now, uh, assistant professor in uh, Near East Languages and Civilizations. Um, she'll be joining the Department of Comparative Literature uh, in the autumn. No, Nama, would you do the honors? Hi, good afternoon. Um, so it's a true pleasure to introduce my colleague and friend and mentor, Orit Bashkin. And I've been told to keep this brief, so I won't list her numerous publications or tell you about the prizes that she has won or her many professional achievements, but rather try to give you just kind of a, a sense of her intellectual style or her intellectual personality. Um, Professor Bashkin is a historian of the modern Middle East, uh, who one of whose main areas of, of specializations is Iraq. Her work deals with the social, the political, and the intellectual history of mo the modern Iraqi state, with the Jewish community in Iraq, and with Jewish-Muslim relations more broadly, and with the diverse national discourses that have formed the modern Middle East. So we sometimes think of the, the academic or the professional historian as the person who is eager to correct us and tell us that it's more complicated than that. And Bashkin's work, in a sense, does the opposite. That is, she writes about a region and about historical realities that are often portrayed in the media and in political discourse as trenchantly complicated, right? Places mired in sectarian violence that is beyond rational comprehension, places with bloody histories that refuse to come to a peaceful end. And Bashkin, of course, does not simplify that picture, but what one might say that she reminds us that it is more human than that. That is, through her meticulous research, her close attention to the archive, her creative engagement with a diver diverse range of sources, and above all through her engaging writing, she shows that the history of the Middle East unfolds not under broad titles like Sunni or Shiite, Kurd or Jew, but on the scale of the human experience with all of the contingency and all of the meandering of human pursuits. Her book, the Other Iraq, Pluralism and Culture in Hashemite Iraq, which was published by Stanford University Press in 2009 and came out in a paperback edition in 2010. Uh, that book explores the humanistic discourses, discourses of emancipation, of liberation, of equality, that were part and parcel of the transition from colonialism to independence in Iraq, and that were part of what we should think of as the failed attempt to establish a democracy there. Her following book, New Babylonians, A History of the Jews in Modern Iraq, which was published in 2012 also by Stanford University Press. In that uh, following book, Bashkin resists a dichotomous vision in 
telling the story of, of the Jewish community of modern Iraq. She does not tell a narrative in which this minority has to choose between being Jewish and, and being Arab, but instead shows that there were multiple, sometimes contradictory, but still multiple ways of being both. And opting once more for the human scale rather than the grand nationalist narrative, Bashkin, for example, will tell the story of one family in which one brother is a Zionist, one a communist, and one an Arab nationalist. Um, and through this family drama, we get a sense of the personal choices and crossroads that are the fabric that makes history. Bashkin's talk today is titled Jew uh, An Ambiguous Exodus, um, or also on your invitation, Jewish Refugees in a Jewish State. And it comes out of a new project in which she's turned her humanizing gaze to the archives of the young state of Israel. And she tells us once more a story that illuminates current political problems. So please join me in welcoming Ori Paskin. Um, thank you all very much uh, for coming. Thank you, uh, Jim, and, and thank you, Nama, for this exceptionally kind uh, introduction. I should say that I'm, I'm very proud to present here at the, um, as a, at, at the, at the Frankie Forum. Uh, my second book, New Babylonians, was written while I was uh, on sabbatical at the Frankie Institute. And um, you know, now, as a member of the board, I get to see a lot of projects that later on I read as applications for, uh, in applications for tenure. And so I can see like how you know, a year at the Frankie materializes into a book and later on materializes into something that is extremely influential. And I'm very proud that I'm part of, um, of this environment. So my talk today, okay, so my, is this better? So my talk today uh, is going to be about uh, Iraqi Jewish uh, refugees in Israel. Um, and I'd like to, ta to start by telling you an anecdote of, um, that takes place in 1951 uh, in a kibbutz in a socialist community called the uh, Gan Shmuel. Uh, it's a sex education class uh, intended for uh, Iraqi Jews um, young Iraqi Jews, uh, teenagers that are staying in the kibbutz, they're separated from their parents, they live in the kibbutz. Um, and Leah Greenstein, um, the sex educator, tells them uh, to ask whatever they want about sex and she will explain it to them. So they ask a bunch of questions. When do you begin to have sex? Can you live without sex? Does homosexuality cause diseases? Does masturbation cause paralysis? Um, and she answers. Uh, in, and in her report, she writes the following. How should I respond to such questions? It is dangerous to give them, these teenagers, freedom because they do not know how to use freedom. Their hot oriental temperament will run its course without any boundaries. On the other hand, you should clarify things, demystify and destroy all these superstition, the whole approach of the household in the East with its enslavement, its fears. You should be direct but honest. And then her actual answers are quite confused. She talks to them about sublimation, but they don't understand. She tells the girls not to have sex before they're the age of 19. She mentions that by us, meaning in Israel, one doesn't go to prostitutes. She tells them that masturbation is not a sin, but one shouldn't overdo this because it uh, causes fatigue or weakness. Um, and so this uh, not so sophisticated uh, report was later on uh, distributed to many uh, kibbutzim, to many socialist communities in Israel um, as a guide as to how to educate sexually uh, young Iraqi Jews. Um, and as you see here, uh, when she talks about the teenagers, there's very sort of, there are very few words about their desires, about sexuality. It's all about the fact that they come from the Orient, that they have superstition. It's us. Uh, and it's them. Um, and in this talk, I want to talk about these children, these teenagers uh, in particular, and what happened to these children or to these uh, teenagers when they uh, arrived to Israel. So my focus of my talk, the focus of my talk today will be about children, uh, but this is a part of a larger project that, look at, that looks at what happens to Iraqi Jews upon their arrival to Israel, how they're integrated into society. And more specifically, I look at about 150,000 individuals, Jews, who were uprooted from Iraq between the years 1949 and 1952 and were uh, settled in Israel. 
Now, why is this project uh, important? Um, I think this project says something about racial relations in Israel between different groups of Jews during the 1950s. So when people think about uh, Israel, the binary that comes to mind is uh, Jew and Arab. Um, I focus in this project on the, on the differences between Ashkenazis, European Jews, um, and Sephardi and Mizrahis, which um, signify Jews from the Middle East. Um, in terms of uh, what else we can learn from this project is about, um, is I hope to, uh, that you can get a sense of something about the 1950s in Israel. Usually the periodization in Israeli national nationalist history uh, looks at 1948 as a key year uh, in which um, you know the state is established, Israel wins a war, 48-49, and then you know the future uh, is bright. It's only the wars with the Arabs again that that do, that, uh, do something to this future. I want to offer a different periodization in which the 1950s is sort of a long decade. Um, are extremely problematic and are marked by suffering and by coming to terms with the state by different groups who never imagined that they would live in this state. Um, and at the end of the talk, I'll also make a sort of a brief context to um, a brief comment about Israeli politics. Uh, now, just a word on the historiography that uh, produced this research. Um, in the 1990s, uh, uh, a new literature in Israel and outside of Israel um, arose that was very critical with respect to Zionism. Now, a lot of this literature focused on the relationship with the Arabs, um, both Palestinians and outside of Israel, but uh, part of this literature also deconstructed the idea of the melting pot, that Israel is this community that all migrants come and they are welcomed with open arms, and the fact that everybody is Jewish somehow makes this migration uh, work. The new literature actually showed that racial relations between different kinds of Jews were extremely uh, important. Another important development in recent years was the rise of Israeli studies in the American academia. Um, paradoxically, the rise of uh, many centers for Israeli studies that often initially were meant to give like a, a positive image of Israel in the American academia or in American campuses led to um, some journals that actually published a lot of works by Israelis about the 1950s, about problems unique uh, to Israel. And again, uh, very important articles were published about the 1950s, the 1960s, um, and inter-Jewish inter tensions. And again, as I've mentioned before, um, the topic uh, of uh, Ashkenazi Sephardi or European Middle Eastern uh, Jewry relationship is very topical in Israel uh, today. Um, generally speaking, and, and this is oversimplifying matters, but um, if you look at voting patterns, uh, many Jews of Middle Eastern descent actually uh, vote for uh, uh, right-wing parties. Um, so young Mizrahis, young Middle Eastern uh, Jews, even young Jews of Middle Eastern descent even today talk about, you know, their disappointment from the Labour Party, about the experience of the 1950s. So this is something that is alive and well uh, in Israel today.